Danke an unser Sponsor Babo. Danke an unser Sponsor. Thank you to our Sponsor Babo. With Babo, you can learn everything you need to have real world conversation from vocabulary words to culture and all it takes just 10 minutes. Here's a special limited deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babo subscription, but only for our listeners at babbo.com slash Felipe. Get 55% off at babbo.com slash Felipe. Felipe spelled B A B B E L dot com slash F E L A P E. Felipe rules and restrictions apply. Our guest is Eddie Bravo. Who's the hostage? Is Bravo Eddie Bravo? Is that, is that a Mexican Klaus Schwab? No, that's some um, Dutch. Oh shit! Oh, nice. I'm you, learning Flemish. Do from, you know who Klaus uh, Schwab is? Bravo. Are you no, up no. on like conspiracy stuff? You know who Klaus Schwab is? This could probably do does. You know? Klaus Schwab. Klaus Sch Oh yeah, uh, I heard Klaus she's wow. my cousin. You know who Klaus Schwab is? No, I, I know who Klaus Whoa. Schwab is. I, I thought you said Schwab. I mean, Darth, we, have, we have a Darth Vader uh, uh, affecting the world. His name is Klaus Schwab. Really? Yeah. You is he related to the Schwab like from the Bank of Schwab? Is he like a? He's uh, isn't he like a he, he, huge he, banker or investor he, or something like he, that? He was a Henry Kissinger's um, creation. And he's the head of the World Economic Forum, WEF. Oh, okay. He's the head. He literally is Darth is. Vader. Darth Vader. It, he wants to control the world. Let me see for the planet, there's, dude. There's massive video of him. Oh, he, no, he's going to die soon. Klaus Schwab. Kind of looks like if Darth Vader his, didn't get his, burned up. He okay. comes yeah. from Nazi lineage. He must, like, he must be the same player where Mitch McConaughey comes from. Oh, they look is the this same. Cool. Guys, you guys got to get, get on it, dude. Klaus. There's a Darth. There's a, a re, I'm telling you. This guy is a real life dog that's going to affect all your lives. You got to pay attention to this guy, dog. We got to turn against him. Most of the world is turning against him. He's, a, he's basically a joke now. Where do you find but, these guys? Dude. Claws of Oaxaca? On the Muppets. Dude. That's one of the like, it's old like, Muppet like, guys. We were talking about the cartel earlier. It's just like the cartel. Oh. It's, but it's not Mexicans. Have you ever read that <laughs> book? Um, and bigger. The, the, yeah, and bigger. The, and the, they're um, controlling the government. It's the cartel. That controls the government. You get on this, bro. bro I'm, oh, Why don't Klaus, you know about this shit? I don't know what Klaus is. Uh, Shaha? What? Klaus Shaw, bro. Okay. Klaus I'm Shaw, trying to help dude. you guys, dog. I, uh, What's his name? Klaus Schwab. Klaus Schwab. Is he related to the Schwab, like the bank Schwab? Like, and, uh, uh, no. Uh, no. The Schwab, no. multi-billion. The, the, because the Schwab started. No, no, this guy's from they Germany. They started bank. Watch, play a right. little video. That's what I thought he was play, saying. Just, like, just That's what I thought it was, Klaus the banker. Schwab. Evil speech. Oh, he was. Oh, wow. And this, guy, this guy wants everyone to. Um, What's his net worth? First, first, first of all, yeah, find yeah. his net worth. He doesn't want any. He wants to take over the world. Awards and honors. He wants to control the slaves. Is uh, is he an American guy? Or is he he's, like, German, he's German. Dog. German. Listen, to, listen to his accent. He comes from Nazi lineage. The Third Reich. Dog. Oh, this shit. is huge shit. See what you start when you start out with the German. Talking this Dutch on your podcast, bro. Okay, I don't believe that guy right there, man. He looked like one of the guys from the culture clash. <laughs> you know, there, there's. <coughs> I mean, there's got to just be a bunch of clips where him saying crazy shit. He looks it's like he's all about how are we gonna control. The people. He gets all the leaders, world leaders. Go. This is how we're gonna control the peasants. This is how we're gonna control the slaves. Straight up. He looks old as fuck. In, in isn't your it? face, and it's it's uh, scary as fuck. But, I think, uh, uh, um, but the, the Louis Farrakhan mentioned this guy one time when he was doing a speech about the Federal Reserve. It's my great honor. Oh to yes. Participate for oh, yeah. the eighth time at this important meeting, even if only he speaks for all the world day. leaders. I would like to express my high respect. To His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum for having taken the initiative for creating such an important global platform for governments shaping the future. 
I also want to congratulate Dubai congratulate. for having organized such a successful World Expo, despite all the repercussions. This guy's already sucking the life out of me. Pandemic. Bro. Bro, that's, okay. no, that's, that's, I was killing Jerry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's how he's going to kill everybody. So, with that. He's going to bore everybody to If his speech is that slow, I, will, I can't listen anymore, bro. Okay. I'll fall asleep. <laughs> I, cannot be a, I cannot be a follower. He's like that vampire yeah, oh, in, in the, they, when, when we get the me. shadows that they, sucks the life out of you. Don't ever get me, yeah. bro. I don't pay Energy attention. Vampire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's the, kind of guy that, uh, he's the kind of guy that shows you, like when you have a job yeah. and he's showing you around, like this is what you do here, and you, you hear his voice, you know, I'm going to quit, bro. Or, <laughs> fuck this. Or you don't remember anything he said. Like, what the fuck did you just say? And then yeah. your, homie, like, your homie's like, nah, bro, this guy's serious, bro. Nah, it's but, a good but, job. And I'm like, nah, man, nah, nah, nah. Yeah. Break, this guy break has, down what he's a this guy has no, but, but he, most of the world leaders go to him to the World Economic Forum every year. So he's part of, the, Roth, a, he's part of a, the Rothschilds? Oh, the, the, he's all up. It's one of them. He's right there. He's he's their representative. The real powerful guys are behind the scenes, but he's their top representative. Wow. Klaus he, he's like the Papa team. So, so you What's met, his yeah, network? So he is. It's hard to listen to, right? Yeah. But you boring, know who's listening dude. to him? World e. leaders. He's got everybody right there. The media, Time Magazine, and just all, every ev everything... Every, every part of the deep state uh, listens to this guy talk. They meet and listen to this guy. And all he's talking about is the, the, the best way to control the slaves. That's all he's talking about. What's, wait, what slaves? Like us or? Yeah, I do. You, you don't think you're a slave? Um, Hell no. To La Curaçao. Yeah. He's actually. Yeah. 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 We're all skates we're through slaves. life, bro. I mean, it's He's crazy. a slave to the we're audio slave. slave. I'm a slave, bro. I, we're I'm all a slave. Dog. We're all slave. This freelance slave. Freelance slave. Freelance slave. 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 slave shoes. Slave. <laughs> slave they found out it was better. To, it was easier to control the slaves. That's what they talk about. Stuff like this. Like, they go, you know what? Let's, instead of housing them and feeding them, let's free them. Yeah. What? Where are they gonna let them pay for their own shit, and we'll still get them to do the work anyways? Whereas you hear the, the that's how it is now though. No, that's what I'm saying. That's how it is now. Freelance though. slaves, exactly. So he's basically like, let's keep it going. No, yeah, he's doing money. a lot of yeah. other shit. He goes, through, they're using climate change to scare everybody into thinking that they're fucking up the climate. That's a big agenda. You know what I read about, about it this? It's huge for him. I read. To, I read, look up, look up a book called uh, "The Creature from Jekyll's Island." Uh, what? Island. The creature from Jekyll, Jekyll Island. Island. Yeah, that's a fucking that book. If you want to read it, it's it's um eleven. Right there, that book, the red one, right there. It tells you about the formation of the Federal Reserve, right there. Okay, yeah. but yeah. that book right there in the beginning, it just tells you like the all a bunch of the like the main guy from the railroad was there, the main guy from oil, the main guy from plastic, gas. And they all met up. They all came together. They all, they all, they all pretended they were going to go hunting. And JP Morgan, and JP Morgan like and, a boys trip. Yeah, JP Morgan, and they had a meeting, bro. And how to, how to decide See, how you um, know, dog. They had a yeah, meeting about. You know what's up? He probably knows. But the about, meeting yeah. was about how to decide how to not have a, another um, another depression, another. Bail out. Another, another time when, when people bring their money right, out. Yeah. They say, you take all your money out. We all take our money out. It's a fallout, bro. So that meeting was like bank this. Yeah. Like, like, it's like, like basically bank, the, the beginning of don't, but, can't fail. But um, and the guy who wrote huh. the book, um, the guy who wrote the book, but on the bottom, on, on the bottom, the end of the book, he has five scenarios of, bro, how, how, um, how could this take place? And a lot of those scenarios that that, are, that he mentioned have happened already. Like one is to scare people. Like, oh man, like it's gonna be like a, a pandemic or whatever. Like the a, TikTok a, ban, bro. Like the like the plebonic plague, you know. Like yeah. a, a big scare with that. Yeah. Another yeah. one was um to um put somebody like um start you know like getting people to fight each other. And another one was um, like to fight and conquer. Another one was um. To unify one monetary money, like, like oh, universalize um, money all together. Canada, all the way, Canada, all the way to the bottom. Mm -hmm. It'll be like one monetary. Oh wow! They wanted to deal with the North American. Uh, to have four, yeah, yeah. NAFTA. Well, it's yeah. basically all moving 
to total consolidation to mm-hmm. one world government, new world. That's what this say, is. David, I fuck that. That's dude. what it is. Uh, this this Darth Vader, Klaus Schwab. Yeah, it's all about how it's just it's a game plan. It's us against the people and the peasants. How do we get to the new world order before they fucking win? So it's gonna be like that. You know, we're battle, that we're, we're in the battle right now, right this second. We're in a battle. There, do the new world Me? orders flexing hard? Oh, but the people oh, are awake. Oh, the people are awake. We're in a we're in a cartel war. Yeah, we're in a, an, an actual cartel war. It's going on right now. <laughs> what it's can I? What right can now. I? What can I do to not uh, uh, feed to this? Or you got a tough skateboard. You know what? Bro. Ignoring <laughs> it. You know what? Ignoring it. That's probably better. Bills, it's probably better I? to ignore it. You hey, know dude, what I mean? this is why it's probably you know better the, to ignore. You know when it. the plane banks a little bit and then it hits a bump and everybody goes, "Oh!" I go, "Here it comes, sweet death." Because I don't want to live through this shit, dude. I hear about this shit all the time. That's crazy, dude. It's my first time we're, about we're, in a, we're in a prison. We're in a prison. Lake. This is like, what's that we're guy with the mask called? Um, that, the Truman ma- Show. The Masked Singer. It's V for Vendetta. Is what oh, yeah. we're gonna, is what I walked out of that movie, bro. Like. That movie sucked, bro. I, I, I really don't suck, really remember bro? that one. All bro, I, remember I walked out of the trailer of that movie. <laughs> Like I only made it halfway through. I, I was the reading at that movie and I put the script down, bro. It was bad. <laughs> there it, it is. Wasn't that like one. Because see, later on when I saw people okay. using that face, I didn't get it, bro. Because oh, I walked yeah. out of the movie. Because yeah. he's the rebel in the movie. He's the guy but fighting I didn't against get the it, system. You know, like yeah. But or like it, in or the movie, it? it's very 1985-ish, where it's That's like 1984, 84 ish where everybody's locked down. Everybody has to like go to a curfew. The media. Runs everybody, and 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 there's a lot of like, oh, last night we made a mistake, or this isn't what you guys actually saw. This is what happened. Oh, that explosion was a trick, and so V for Vendetta was like the guy kind of causing chaos, like to like disrupt it. He was like the disruptor. Interesting. And but I, I people always reference this because it's like that's how they say we're gonna live if like, you know, the new world order takes over, and all of a sudden we're like, you know, we're we're gonna be on lockdown, you know, like. That's all they want. That, Which that I don't Klaus mind. Schwab. I'll be home the whole time. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. I, need, I'm like, is there video games in the New World Order? Because if there is. Eats, bro. Yeah, that's... Uh, you know, Sam Tripoli had a, a joke that I'll never forget. There's some jokes I'll never forget. Never. This was the 20 years ago at the Comedy Store. He said, you know why hot chicks don't know shit about politics? He goes, because if Darth Vader came down and took over the world, they'd still get VIP. That's I'll fun. never forget That's that shit. Funny, it's dude. true, right? If the New World Order, like a hot chick in the New World Order, is still gonna have luxury. That's why I feel you know like I mean? I'll have, like I'll be like I'll have a place, dude. I'll, like, I'll be a doorman or something, dude. <laughs> What's up, food podcast? We have Eddie Bravo right here, man, Woo! from the from the sixth planet, right? Ninth, planet. ninth planet. Okay, right. it used more. to be tenth, but uh, I, I think NASA. They uh, made it nine. When you are, what? Yeah, they they said, you know what, Pluto. That's why they got rid of Pluto. Pluto. It's not a planet no more. It's, it's a star. Yeah, they, it's now binary now. No, bro. it is. It's a dwarf planet, is what I heard it is. But that doesn't make sense to me. It's a planet, Question, or it's not a planet. Eddie, you're. Uh, did they land on the moon? Yes or no? No. Come on, man. I know my brother always say that, bro. Like, bro, how are they going to land on the moon, bro? How are they going to air that People shit? People believe 1969, it. it was live, right? Live? Right. Yeah. Live. See, and um, live, right? right? Live, live. Live. And okay. And uh, sometimes the I, was trying to watch, I was trying to watch Hulu with three fake passwords, bro. <laughs> Couldn't get to La Jolla. Do you believe in the moon landing? But I don't, I don't even care about it, bro. I don't, I don't care about it. I don't know get into discussion, but if the truth, now, if, if the truth, I question if it the truth a lot, dude. Doesn't matter. I carry. To you? I ponder the idea because right. it really now. Now you think about it, I think about Chuck Bartel's joke. This comedian, he goes, uh-huh. a lot of people say that we didn't land on the moon, that it was fake. Even if it was fake, we're the first ones to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's. Fucking, who said that? Chuck, Chuck Bartel. Bartel dude. A stand-up? Yeah. He did it on stage? Yeah. Fuck, I wanted to steal that shit. Here's it, here's That's the, so good. Dude, I think... Did the one for 20 years ago. He That's fucking remembers. good. <laughs> Chuck uh, Bartel, see yeah. you there. See, yeah, this so is the thing... Just, 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 like, just, it's better not... I wish I didn't know shit. I'd rather be like my grandma. That's how he feels my, right now about grandma, the astronauts. He's going through yeah, that grandma. right now, bro. I'm thinking about fucking the, Klaus Schwab, dude. Uh, I don't dude, like can that I, guy, dude. Can I, can I, 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 here's my thing, man. I, I get a, I have a lot of friends who talk like a lot about this stuff as well. 
And I, I have bumper stickers all over their car, bro. I, I, all I it is, 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 is yeah, here's my, yeah. my thing is this, my thing is like yeah, if yeah, you're Wahoo, Wahoo's me, like, taco stickers, bro. Lying to us and tricking us into poverty this whole time. Like it's not it's not a surprise to me. You know what I mean? Like I like I I've never once been like, oh yeah, they're looking out for our best interest. Yeah, there's that's that's a that's a good Feeling? But I'm Mexican. I grew up Mexican in this world, so like to You're me, no one's Mexican? ever looked. Yes, no one's ever looked out for my best yeah. interest. You, you know Spanish? what I'm No, fuck no. Okay, I, I'm <laughs> here. I'm like. <laughs> that was you on this side, eh? Yeah, yeah like, I, 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 but I, I still, but like that doesn't matter. I you from Stacatecas, bro. bro. That never like got me. You know what I mean? Like I feel like. I've lived before, below the poverty line my whole life, so yeah. it's like, oh yeah, that's you know, going it's on. funny, man. That fool say I'm, I'm Mexican, man. Whatever, right? <laughs> but last week when we asked Rodrigo, well, you're from Zacatecas. No, I'm from Riverside. My parents are Zacatecas. <laughs> yeah, you're from Guadalajara, right? What was that? You're from Guadalajara. You told my me, right? My mom's from Guadalajara, and my. Uh, mi mamá es de Guadalajara, mi papá de Chihuahua. You oh, see the way, yo bro? Nací, yo, yo nací en Los Ángeles. Sí, sabes, mira. See the way he said it, bro? Mira. The way he just said it, bro, like, you know, he's proud that his parents are from Mexico, from, right. from Guadalajara, and he's proud to say that he was born and Hell raised yeah. here in America. Not like last week. Show that clip of Rodrigo, I'm mad, bro. Oh, when I, when, oh wait, shit. Is it cool for real? <laughs> yeah. No, you but when it? I say that, the reason I say that is when I say, when I say that, People think, like, I have that down perfect. Because you announced that I have so that good, down yeah. perfect. So when people, Mexicans hear that, they think they could get all emotional with me in Spanish because yeah. I said it. They're like, damn, that guy speaks perfect Spanish. But I only know <laughs> that person. Uh, okay, so I, I, I know that. Say azul. I, so I say, like, I can, <laughs> and I can enunciate words really well in Spanish, but I don't know shit for Spanish. Yeah. So when they give me something, oh, gracias. They're like, oh, man. And they, I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, like, you fucked up. You should have yeah, said it. Here we go right here. You should have said gracias. I embrace my domestication, though. I'm from, huh? My don't like it. From I'm from Riverside. What <laughs> Wait, play that Rewind that shit, but play it loud. This is all politicians use clips, bro. Yeah, play it a little louder. Uh, Zacatecas. 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 Where are you from, huh? My my parents are, are from Zacatecas. I'm from Riverside. What up? Part of Zacatecas did you grow up? What? what? Very good, eh? Municipio. Uh, I is that him? No, that's hell no. You guys want to? You guys want to vote for this guy? Uh, Zacatecas. Zacatecas. Who was that? Huh? I'm that's the, that's, the, that's the guy who uh, called what a cop in a taco Zacatecas. truck. Yeah. <laughs> he likes Yellowstone, <laughs> bro. What are you gonna do? He was Rodrigo Torres. He's a co-host. He's a co-host here, but he's not here oh, today. Yeah, I'm taking his place. He's the one that had um, he had he had, he had, a, he had a, uh, Joe Diaz impersonation contest. But see, when we asked you, I knew you. you I knew that you were born here. But I'll just see how you answer. Yeah. But this guy was so defensive. Well, I think everybody in the comments, he's so defensive about it. What did it. he say exactly? Repeat it. What did he say? What was the whole question? Because the, the chick right here. Hey, what, okay, the black last, chick right what, there. What was the question? Our, this black girl, she was Raised. adopted by Mexicans <laughs> and, oh, and I raised. Saw, no, no, I saw this clip. Oh, yeah. wait, it's all coming back. Black chick. Yeah. See, I can't see it. Yeah. Oh, the black chick. Yeah, 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 Mexican. Yeah, up. yeah, so then we asked the co host, so you're from Zacatecas. No. My parents are from Zacatecas. I'm from Riverside. From Riverside? But. I wouldn't say I'm from Riverside. Uh, Zacatecas. 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 Where are you from, huh? My my parents are from Zacatecas. I'm from Riverside. What up? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, man, you can just leave though, out right? the Riverside. You know what I mean? You can just be like, but, well, but, you, my... but, but you know, like you said, like the Mexican in the body. Oh, you're badass now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even oh, Mexican you're from Zacatecas. Hey, bro, if you did that to me, I'd be like, yeah. 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 So he got attacked, right? Yeah, they attacked him. And you know when, like, in that Dave they also Chappelle call the cops on the taco truck. You know what Dave Chappelle calls the N word? Damn. Like, hell yeah, we're the N word. Like, that. That's how. I, that's that's how I would be if you were like, your is your family from second? I'd be like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah Question: Do you think the government or somebody out there is knows how to control or make weather? Of course. Like, in, remember that bionic woman? Today, my wife and I woke up, and it was fucking, like, dark, bro, all of a sudden. I mean, we do, the time we do right. see clouds. There's a, there's a farmer can shoot shit in the air, right, to start a cloud? Uh, Well, we have planes that seed clouds that dump, like, vapor, like, water vapor. And it, it mixes. And, then... um, and it mixes. It, like, it's because, like, that's what clouds are is, like, it's it's vaporized water. And then the, close, the more it gets heated up, that's where we get rain. Yeah. So um, what they try to do is start a vapor the trail over here. for like, hey, a va like for a cloud to get bigger. I believe that's how it works. I mean, yeah. that's how it, I was What's told, that? but there's obviously like so many like... Huh? Cloud seeding, what are you talking about? 
Cloud what? Cloud seeding. Cloud seeding. Yeah. Yeah, they've been able to control the weather since the 60s. They've been they've been doing all the But you're talking like hurricanes all, and shit like yeah. that too. All that. Hurricanes, all that shit. That that's all it's all it's not even a, a Dude, conspiracy theory. I had a they, they they can control they they're they're spraying the fucking skies with metallic particles and then they got harp in Alaska that that shoots like a billion volts of of electricity and they control the ionosphere or whatever the fuck they want to call that. I don't know how it works, but all I know is there's a fucking like it's like ten football fields of antennas. It's called harp. It's you could read about it on the internet. Are you talking about on Mac Murda? I'm talking about harp. Like right, but uh there's a base on um up there like that has all of what you're talking about. It's called Mac Murda. But there might be that device up there. Harp is like way more famous than Mac Murda. Okay. All right. Harp is like when when you look into it at all, you're like, damn, what, what are they doing in Harp? It's a it's a U.S. Air Force military base, and they're shooting. They're telling you in their own documents. This is the Jewish space they're te- laser. They're telling what? you that they're con- they're trying to control the weather. They're telling you that. Uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, what's Margaret. Her? Mar- Marjorie. Yeah, Marjorie something. Taylor Green talks about the Jewish oh, space laser. So so oh, so those windmills over there by the desert, bro. By uh, by fucking um, Palm Most Springs. Spring. The windmills, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about those? <laughs> this guy said right here. I said those that, are fans to keep the people cool in Arizona in Palm Springs, dude. <laughs> that's see, they are controlling that's, that's, that's the That's a conspiracy <laughs> theory right there, see? This guy <laughs> said they're fans to cool down the city. Uh, dude, it, that's a conspiracy theory right there, dude. That's what he said. Eh? <laughs> what do you think about that, Eddie Bravo? It's like the <laughs> by um, everybody. What do you think about that, Eddie Bravo? It. I think I think uh, all that shit is just <coughs> to, pu- to push climate change and like, uh, like electric cars and all that shit. They want you in electric cars so they could push climate change and so they can control your car. It's the perfect slave shit. They talk about it, Klaus Schwab. It, they it, talk about it in the WEF. It, they're, t- they're, t- they're like, you know what? They figured it out. If everybody get them in get, electric cars and we could fucking turn their shit off. If everybody that, gets an electric car, does that mean that uh, people aren't going to pay for smog checks anymore? Yeah, that's kind of what it means. They're going to go out of business. Those smog checks. <laughs> they're going to have to shift. Well, yeah, the dude. smog <laughs> lobby is going to have to do something about it that. Might be I know, right? These guys, it might t- turn It'll be tough, like, man. There's a lot of money in shitty cars. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, you pay them like fucking money. It actually money. really is. A, it's a I cottage bro, industry. I did a show one time for Toyota. It was uh-huh. a corporate gig. And I'd have to sit through a whole boring ass meeting, bro, about how to save money, how to make money. And uh, the guy, my friend who booked me, he goes, You know who that is, bro? I was, <laughs> I was like, I don't give a fuck who any of these people are. He goes, The guy, he was a son yeah. of that motor oil, a fucking. Castor oil or the whatever? The other one, bro. Pen's oil? Pen, no, pen. Yes. Uh, olive oil. No, the other one. <laughs> There's Pennzoil, Castor. Uh, what was the other ones back in the day? Like, Anyways, that guy's a Valvoline. pen. Valvoline. He, he, he's, he's Pens. Penskis. Oh, pen, Pens. There's pens like oil. He's, he, he, yeah. he's a Pens. Oh, yeah, for the Pens wow. oil family, right? He was there for, he worked for Toyota, I guess. He could, cause, cause they used oh, Pens oil. oil. Yeah. So... He was there. Oh, these guys just named shit after uh, themselves and it lasted. Not like Jim's liquor. <laughs> the, the, the guys goes like this, you know, the economy's down, blah, blah, blah. We're, we ain't selling that much cars, but we're going to make all that back in, in auto repairs. Because they know that people uh, are not going to yeah. buy cars, so they're going to be driving that shit for an extra year. Sure, sure. So they're going to make a shitload of money in the trade-ins and in rental cars, bro. But that's the so, thing that I... I, but I, I sat, that's the only thing I remembered. <laughs> but that's the one re- thing I question about conspiracy theories because... They fucking us right out in the open. But check this out. You know what I mean? They, like they 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 paid uh, my, my friend. I don't know how much money. He's the comic. You know, I'm a corporate gigs pay right. a shitload of money, right? Fuck tons. And those bro. people were getting medals and pizza. No carne asada, bro. Yes, you know? dude. When they could have just said, "Fuck these comics," we'll give the the, the money to the employees. Right. Oh, shit. Or buy them something nice. <laughs> yeah, but instead of um, they were just uh, giving awards for. This guy never called in sick. Here's a little a little fucking gift card to to um Northwoods in Steakhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hey, I feel the, I feel good. the slavery, I, I do feel the slavery thing that Eddie talks about because I'm I'm like I think like that all the time. You are a slavery, like, you're a big ox. It was just some need something somebody to move, they call you. Yeah. Boom. Man. Every fucking time, bro. 
every time. But I do feel like that's the thing about work, dude, is like you work, you're basically trading off your life force for money. You know what I mean? In a certain way, if you're working a really hard job. And you work for free like, for a Russian guy, right? At your landlord? Uh, or I will help him out and then he'll take off uh, money from the... Like Uber is yeah. like a very... Uber <laughs> yeah. to me is a very slave... Like that one to me is also one that I think about is like this one guy pointed out as Uber driver he goes, you're, you're trading the <clears throat> equity and health of your car for very little money at a time. <clears throat> Every time you drive someone around, I was like, dang. Is bro. that true that when you buy a car and you leave the lot, it, it loses money? Oh, right away. Like that, bro. That's when people buy like brand new cars. You know, it's Ooh. like it, it loses. Yeah, like big time. Tracy Morgan bought when he when he bought that Lamborghini, when he got out of the, when he got his accident, he got his money. Yeah. As soon as he drove out the lot, his fucking white lady hit him, bro. Oh, then the value goes up. But other I than that. I was driving a Nova. What's up, Fubaka? <laughs> Eddie Bravo right here, man. What happened, bro? I heard that. My friend Rodrigo said that um, when you choke that fool out, you had death threats. No, who's telling you? you Rodrigo, bro, that, that's shit. his conspiracy theory. What death? Yeah. For what fool? Death what, what, when you put Shamrock in a hole or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's hysterical. That's hysterical. Yeah, because you we, we we watched the video and um, but you did put them out, right? Uh. You're talking about uh, Hoyler Gracie. Hoyler Gracie. I'm, I'm yeah, so yeah, sorry, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, but that, I, I was wrong. He, he, that's what he's talking about. I just had Shamrock on my head. Hoyler yeah. Gracie. I heard that the yeah. family went after you because. No, they didn't. Uh, there, nobody went after me. There was no death threats or anything like no? that. No? It was just, no. No, it was just, um, it's a complicated story. It's a. Uh, um, Man, it's it'll take it like an hour to explain, you know. But I didn't get any death death threats. It was a you know I was considered um, the black sheep of jujitsu, which is well back then it was mostly Brazilian, but nowadays jujitsu is all over the world and massive in the United States. But back then it was just you you could only learn from Brazilians. It was brand new '90s. It was like the Brazil the UFC uh, exposed. <clears throat> Martial arts, you know, it's like damn, all these kung fu and karate guys they don't know how to fight on the ground. These Brazilian guys, yeah, all, I remember all, those they're guys. They're all dude. really good at fighting on the ground. So, in the '90s, it was brand new. That's when that movie like about Capoeira came out, and then people were like watching that, and then it brought like Brazilian jiu jitsu kind of in the frame for yeah. like a lot of people. I remember that shit, like, because I remember being a kid and being like, you have see looks. That shit looks wild. UFC one was like yeah. wild. It was bro. like street fight in real life. Oh, yeah, tap dude. out, huh? And they had big ass fools fighting fight, middle dude. guys. When you were fighting, yeah. there was no weight class, huh? You just fight wherever they brought you, brought you in. In in the UFC, the UFC is is uh, <clears throat> jujitsu, wrestling, and kickboxing. It's everything all at once. Um, there's jujitsu tournaments that it's just jujitsu. There's wrestling tournaments that are just mm -hmm. wrestling, and there's striking tournaments that are just striking. Striking fights, right? Like boxing. Are yeah. they on the, are they going to the ground? No, they're just no. doing boxing. But you, the UFC and MMA, that's everything all in one. It's like a, a triathlon. Yeah, you know what I mean. You some people just like to run. Some people just like to swim. Some people just like to ride a bike. Some people want to do all three. You know, the guys that want to do all three, they fight in the UFC. Yeah. Guys that just want to do one, there's a, a a whole like you know, it's like a whole scene, like a whole comedy scene, a whole jujitsu scene, just. Just no, no, no kickboxing, just jujitsu, you know. And then there's just wrestling, you know. Yeah. Um, and you know, so were you a good fighter as a kid? No, I was a big pussy. Really? Yeah. No shit. I'm what, still a pussy. Whoop! What, that my dad, who's never like claimed he's never lost a fight, says he's like a pussy too because he's like afraid of everything. That's what. But what made you like want like not be a pussy? What made you like? I was always a pussy, always. Um, my family, they no, no one ever looked at me as like a fighter or anything. I did wrestle in high school. Him too, bro. They call him Maricone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did, dude. They did. I got picked yeah. I'm still a pussy though. I just got into jujitsu because um, my hope, my main goal was to make it in music. So um, I moved to Hollywood and I'm like we're gonna do it. I'm 21. I'm gonna fucking take over the music business. Fuck yeah. And where'd you uh, move from again? Huh? Where'd you move from? Again? Santa Ana. 
Oh, Santa Ana. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. We'd be in Hollywood all the time. Like at 16, yeah. 17, I'd be driving. I had a car at 16. I would. We would just drive. Down. Oh, the best every, times. Oh, every weekend. If it's like 86, 87, 88, the height of metal on Sunset. Oh, shit. The rock. It was all the records, yeah, bro. Dude. Were, I, I was, yeah, dude. I'm a 16-year-old kid driving from Santa Ana. Just the I mission was to rock. be the mission was to be drunk by the time we got the. That's so L.A. Oh, was man. a place to come. Wine coolers, were, like, wine you coolers, out there. wine coolers. <laughs> <laughs> so L.A. was like, like, cause I grew up in San Jose, but like going to San Francisco there it is, was look. shit. Oh shit, dude. Yeah, look at that hair, dog. Oh, That's metal right there. Fuck, oh, yeah. you were in the metal, bro. Nice. Smear enough ice. Yeah, so um, came out here. So I thought, you know what? I, I don't want to be an out of shape rock star. I got to start fucking working out because on stage I want to look all buff. And uh, so I started, I joined a gym where, where to lift weights. It lasted one day. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I'm in Hollywood. I'm like off Hollywood Boulevard and La Brea. Right there. I live right fucking fuck there. Yeah. Wow. And I'm like, dang, I got to get the in shape because be there, when man. I get this record deal, I got to look good on stage. You know, yeah. so the girls could go crazy. Because all, all, those those, food, all those foods are shredded. All those I was ready heads, to right? get yeah. signed, dog. I go, I'm going to get signed any day now. You know, I got to get in shape. So I, I couldn't lift weights. I'm like, this is too boring. So I go, you know what? I always been, been a big Bruce Lee fan. So I go, you know what? Let me find some karate <laughs> or some kung fu or some shit. Right. And I found a karate school by my work. Uh, and, uh, and then I just started doing karate just to stay in shape. And then that turned into an obsession. And I got into jujitsu once I found out, you know, I watched UFC and then jujitsu fucked up karate and kung fu. I'm like, damn, I've been doing the wrong shit. So I went right to, I went from karate to um, jujitsu. And it was just to stay in shape. And it was to like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't be a pussy. Maybe I should learn some self-defense and yeah. so I won't be such a big pussy no more. You know, it was like like that. But, you know, once a pussy, always a pussy. I'm not trying to fight nobody. Yeah. You know I mean? I'm not trying to, if anybody fucks with me, I'll, I know I could put them out, you know, but I'm not trying to fight That's nobody. That's what I was going to ask. I'm trying like, to, like if you're I'm in trying public to, I'm someone... trying to, I want peace. I don't want no yeah. shit. Like, if you're in public and someone starts, like, talking shit and it's about to go down, you still get, like, oh, fuck, dude. Like, you know, like... Like what? Like, you still, like... You get scared. You get scared still. Even though you know nobody I can handle no, myself, but, like... No, yeah, you always get scared. Okay. Like, you always you, get, but, but nobody ever... That never happens. Nobody you, nobody is ever, like... Nobody's talking... No one, I, I, no one, I no one that, tries to check me, ever. For Rodrigo, bro, he told me that... Um, what after you took down... Um, uh, the gay scene, yeah, that uh, you, people walking up to you and challenge you like they were challenging Bruce Lee. Like on the, like Man, on the, like you'll be walking and go like this. Come so on, Eddie. Out. No, no. Like they will go to your fucking um, yeah. dojo and go like, nah, man, where's he at? No, no, it wasn't like that at all. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. Like if you fuck somebody people up. People who don't watch you, you just, you just make up stories. Like. I, uh, yeah. They just exaggerate. Because, I mean, it's, it was more business. I, I come back from Brazil. Ooh. I open up a jiu-jitsu school. And now when you open up a jiu-jitsu school, I just beat Hoyler Gracie. People do come through and they want to take the class. I'll take the class. But, you know, in jiu-jitsu is the only martial art where you get to spar 100%. You go 100%, it's a war. And yeah. you're playing a game of death. But there's no striking allowed. So it's a, like we're fighting without striking. Well, that's cool. So dude. it's all about. I could do that. Yeah, yeah any, you, you, we do it with our best friends. Like the people we love. <laughs> all my best and friends. Holding, right? Submitting, submit, submitting. Put, putting. Grappling is the, it's, a, it's also a style of wrestling too, right? I, grappling yeah. is just everything. Grappling is anything where your body is like on someone else's body and you're fighting. Well, it could be wrestling. It could be ju grappling is wrestling. Yes, grappling is grappling. Grappling yes. is a keto. Gra it's just like not. It's fighting without striking. That's what grappling is. Yeah. And in like kickboxing or karate or kung fu or any like taekwondo, you can't ever spar 100%. No one ever spars 100%. No contact. It's no hard little contact. contact. And if there is, you can't hit hard because you don't want to knock somebody out. It's right. So you never get a real kill. You go, you go to train, you hit the pads. You don't ever I, get I the real kills. I never thought about that, but In jujitsu, you get the real kills. Because wow. in jujitsu, the art is to, I'm going to put you in a, in a move where if you, you don't tap give out. up, you're going to go to sleep. That's fucking rad, dude. You know I didn't I mean? know so, that. About, I did I not know, know that about, at all. That's, I didn't know that, buddy. That's, that's, that's why people go. Like, you could go full on. My, people Hardcore as hard as you want. Yeah, that's, like that's why people do it. Because oh, it's fun. Rad, dude. No one's hurting each other. You're just, yeah. we're wrestling. And it's just a good workout. I'm going to, I'm trying. Dude, so, you should be a jujitsu recruiter, bro. Because like Mike Tyson says. That's my business. I never, bro. I've never been interested in that until right now. Me too. Me too, bro. It's like Mike Tyson said, bro. Everybody come with a plan to get hit. I thought you get punched. Joe, Joey yeah, Diaz dude. started when he was 55. That's what I cocksuckers. You know I mean? 
<laughs> Joey Diaz has been doing it for like ten years now. That's true. Yeah, he never, he never, he never came to the like comedy shows with like like a black eye or something. Yeah, like that, I always right? thought you got punched and shit. <laughs> he just came back with a, with a loose shoulder. I'm right? getting any fights, dog. I'm too old. That's true. Yeah, he was always he's always doing all that. That's stuff. That's fucking rad, dude. You used to um, train with a guy named Machado. He's my master. He's the one that gave me my black belt. I saw him one time in a video with um. He he went to a show with um. Russell Peters, mm. and um, Joe. Yeah, Russell Peters you say you met them. Joe Rogan there at Machado Studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where I met Joe Rogan. Uh, so Machado, the legend too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. In the jujitsu world, he's very he's humble. Like, that guy, bro, like Machado. Really? I saw him in a video one time, and like he was, um, they were, up, they were, everybody was praising him, and he like he stood back and he goes, Nah, 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 man. He was joking around. Nah, I'm, I'm here writing coattails too. It was funny, man. Very, very sweet guy. Yeah, Jean Jacques Machado, one of uh, five Machado brothers. They were part of the Gracie clan. They were like the cousins of the Gracies, but Jean they were Philip. all integra integrated. And Jean Jacques Machado, he was, he's the one I trained with from white belt to black belt. Mm. He's a, he's a, a massive jujitsu legend. I mean, that's they're gonna make a statue of that guy one of these days. Damn, put it right there at the fucking airport. <laughs> So when you when you go for a, a straight up jujitsu match, um, what the the what what's the stand? Because I know like in MMA they go on like a, like fighters and jujitsu they, I really don't know. A jujitsu match is just no striking. No do, striking, but you're just no you're just trying to grab each other. So there's so there's striking and then there's jujitsu. Fighting on the ground, fighting on the feet. Wrestling is what takes the fight. To the ground. To the ground, yeah. Or what keeps it on its feet, and the other guy's got to trade. So in wrestling, you, you're, you, wrestlers are the best at taking people down, but they're also the best at not getting taken down. Because you can't be the best at taking someone down if you get taken down easily. It's yeah. impossible. Yeah, good so, you know what I mean? fucking... So okay. wrestling good is wrestler the in-between. A, a, a striker needs wrestling <laughs> to stay on his feet, and a grappler needs wrestling to take the fight to the ground. Right. So the res wrestling is like... In between, so it's standing on your feet, striking, kickboxing, whatever, muay thai, whatever, yeah. Western boxing, kung fu, taekwondo. On the ground, when you guys are on the ground, off your feet, and you're fighting, whole different world. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's jujitsu. That's fucking crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, I like that. And shit. and Sounds that's why fun, people yeah. get a, uh, addicted to it because it's a real life uh, video game. It's a virtual reality video game that that uh, um, can save your life. Yeah, because you could get really good at Fortnite, but that's not going to save your life. I'm good. At but you get really good at jujitsu, <laughs> and you get killed when you tap someone out. That's a fucking kill. Because yeah. on the street, if I didn't let you go, you'd be dead. So we're 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 getting to the the dead zones, yeah, and everyone's man. cool, and we all love each other, and we go get Korean I'm barbecue. You, bro. Yeah, should we every go fight? every every we man fight? should should every man fight? should want to be able to defend bro, themselves. The only move I know is a figure four leg lug, and I could only do I, with infants. I was in wrestling in high school, and I had the fastest <laughs> and my pin sister. in in the history of my school. <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah, I got pinned in one second. Bro. Okay. You know, you know, the last time someone told me that, <laughs> Dude, the last time. No, you, that actually happened. No, that's no, no, got pinned. That's, that's a real thing. You want to hear a story? Yeah. Want to hear a cool story? That reminded me of something. He just said. He said he got the fastest pin in his high school. <laughs> they pinned him. So, they pinned me in one second. Oh, wait a minute. They pinned you. That was real. Oh, you were the guy that got I got pinned. pinned. The guy. Oh, I, shit. Dude, okay. It was. It was I was yeah, in, one arm. I was, in, uh, <laughs> I was in 189 class, and the dude lifted my legs out. I went up for him, and he just grabbed my legs. Oh. Pulled me out quick. Oh, shit. And dropped me on the back of my head, dude. And I was so painful, and he just pinned me in like one second. <sighs> and and the, the ref came over, and he's all, congratulations. You're part of the fastest pin. In like the county for the last <laughs> blah, blah blah, and I was like, "Dang, bro! At it's least I got it." And then everybody was like, "Butch got a record." <laughs> you want to hear my story? That's yeah. Like, it, I'm, I'll, I'll try to make it quick. But when I first started teaching in 2003, that's when it happened. That's when I tapped out of Royal Gracie. I started teaching, and dude, I got I got all when I opened up the school. I basically, I just started teach, teaching jujitsu at a boxing gym that already existed. I didn't. It wasn't like I just went in there and started teaching people. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I I signed a lease and found a spot and opened up a school. It isn't like that. Like in the beginning, it's not like that. Yeah. You're just like a dude is just trying to right. use another person's gym to like when you when can I use this? Can I teach a seven thirty jujitsu class? That's how you start. Yeah. And that's how I started. And then I I 
I got all the rejects from all the neighboring schools, like all the guys, not the rejects, the outcasts. I got the outcasts and they all, you know, they were all disgruntled students at different, <clears throat> the different schools. Then I start teaching, they all came to me. So I got all, dude, I got a motley crew, dog. You know what I mean? And then I, you know, I got a couple, if for some reason, male porn stars, uh, they like doing jujitsu. You know what it I mean? Keeps and I them know, in shape, even, yeah. when, even when I was a blue belt, John Jock, dog. Yeah. even when I was a when I was a blue belt, when I was training before I got my black belt, before I opened up my school at John Jock's school, there was a couple uh, porn stars. I gave them uh, privates and everything. Those dudes, they like, I don't know, I don't know. They're into jujitsu. It's crazy. There's a bunch of them. So there was one when I opened up a school. I got a couple guys. They they, they produced porn and they directed porn and they did porn. Wow. And. Um, and one of them said, and you know, I'm I'm in you know, I'm single as hell. I'm, <laughs> fucking, I'm going hell to yeah. Vegas almost every weekend. All I'm doing is trying to get laid in this part of my life. You know what I mean? So I, I told I'd never been on a porn set, so I saw uh, I had been on no, I had been on like one. It was it wasn't a real set. But anyways, I told this guy I go, Fashion party. he was a director. I go, Hey, <laughs> invite me to one of your your your, your scenes. Was that vivid or it, uh... no, it was low it, I didn't know. Because <laughs> at that point the only porn I saw, the only porn I saw was high level shit. Like the shit that Andrew Blake produces for Playboy. Snuff. It's like shot, it's shot like like the girls are like perfect. And it's all like lesbian stuff and and it's yeah, all it's a high level. Rush, I didn't yeah. know there was levels, dog. Oh, that's all levels, I saw. Bro. No, that's all I saw back then. This was it like powers, this man. was like early two thousands. It was the internet was internet porn wasn't that yeah. popular at that point. So all I you had to have you, you had to have tapes. VHS tapes, oh, and I had my right. VHS tapes. Andrew Blake, that's how I know. And I thought all porn was like Andrew that. Andrew Blake, for and, and and that's what I, I thought all porn was like that. And then uh, I, I gotta know, I gotta know. <laughs> so so uh, my so he calls me one day, goes, hey dude, I'm shooting at the spot and fucking in uh, like Silmar. And I'm like, he goes, you want to come through? I'm like, fuck yeah. I was like, oh shit. I was imagining Andrew Blake high level shit. I was I didn't know it was like the lowest shit ever. Like I get there and the series it was uh uh Ed Powers. It was uh uh <laughs> anal anal cream pies. No, that, that, 45. That was a John Four Four 40. 45. Wow. Anal cream so the the What, what is that Rocky was what's out of 45 control? for? Part 45. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Part 45. Oh, boy, yeah. <laughs> so I get there. <laughs> Anal <laughs> cream pies. The 45. So I get there. Same Angel. chick? Yes. From what chick? I, mean, I never even got to the chick. Is it the same chick? He's asking if it's the same chick I 45 speak Martin. times. He's asking if Are it's part 45. Me, bro? Oh, okay, but There's a the same series. Yeah, yeah. It's a series. Did like, you just God. ask if it's the same chick 45 yeah, yeah. times? I don't know. <laughs> She she did forty five gangbang. Oh, oh bro, that's dude. a that's a hey, bro, that's a soldier right there. Real dude. So I get there and it's in like this. Um, I learned really quick that that uh, people that own houses when they're in between renters, they 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 have the connections and they rent their empty house. It's currently nice. empty and get some porn money real quick. And they get like like different porn companies pretty mm. low level. I thought I was going to high level, dude. I show up and. I walk in, and my my student is like sitting. He goes, "Hey, what's up?" You know, he, had, <laughs> he, had, he, had, he he's like fixing the camera. And shit. Oh, the oh, camera! Shit, and I like, oh, oh, you started out like this. No, no, the so, camera. Like, 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 the camera. Hey, what's up, bro? I'll be in the minute. I gotta keep him. I gotta keep him hard. Oh. Yeah. No, he's on the camera. I'm sorry, it did look like yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. he was sucking oh, a guy's you dick. You had me, dog. <laughs> So I walk in and I'm standing there and it's an empty living room with one couch. Oh, and on the right. couch, there's two dudes sitting on the couch naked, like far from each other. Yeah. Jerking off. They need to stay And ready. I walked They're in. They're jerking off, bro. I walked in and apparently the, my student, who's the camera guy, he's the director. He goes, hey, what's up, dude? He was like telling the talent, the male talent. The girl is in the bathroom getting ready. 
It's going to be one girl, two guys, apparently. Yeah. Anal cream pies. Wow. 46. Like, damn, so, so I'm jerking off on the couch next to this guy. <laughs> well, they need to keep it going, bro. They need to, yeah. So I'm standing there. Low budget for I'm a I'm standing fluffer, there. Bro. And yeah. I'm like. Yeah. self love. The guy, the guy, the guy, my student looks over and goes, hey, what's up? You know, and I'm like, oh, shit. And I, like, I, I can't look at the couch, right? I could see him yeah, in he's the He's tapping now. They got. <laughs> they got. <laughs> they're warming up. <laughs> yeah. No, literally, literally, not figuratively. It's not a fucking metaphor, <laughs> not metaphorically. They're warming <laughs> up. Yeah, they're excited for the they scene. Like... The girls in the sh in the bathroom, they got fucking baby oil or some shit. Yeah, and I'm crying. like in the periph, in the periph. Yeah. I'm going, oh my god, my buddy's over here, and then these two guys on the couch. You just see there. the shiny. And I see the one guy. You need to warm yeah. up, Butch. I'm good, dog. You know what? And then, this is where, this is where this is where this is why I thought of it. Because he was talking to them about jujitsu, and apparently one of the, the guys, the male talent, actually wrestled in high school. So he thought he had something in common with me. Yeah. So I'm standing there going, fuck, this is not what I expected. He's I'm talking like, to you about oh, shit. <laughs> And he goes, like, yo. I used to wrestle, bro. Yeah, exactly. Hey, yeah. That's what he did. I was like, you, bro, I was going to fight, but then I got into this, yeah. dude. I, I was a musician, too, but I used to play the guitar and everything. Exactly. <laughs> but he went, he went like this. That was it. The thing with the guitar. You know what he said? He goes, I used to wrestle. I got, no. the, I got the the record for the fastest pin in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I that's what I thought of. <laughs> that's funny, he said to bro. me, I'm like, dude, that brought me back to that. <laughs> oh yeah. But seriously, bro, that's though, but, like, dude, but that's awesome. Said, you should do jujitsu. Oh said. my god. But then he, like, he, he, he blinked that nice, but seriously. Even man. if my girl wakes up while I'm drinking off, bro, I stop, dog. I'm hey, like, hey, and then he blinked his eye and said, But seriously, man, we're slaves. You heard you heard the fucking we're all slaves. Bro, yeah. I got this book on David Icke. Eh? You heard of Klaus Schwab, You heard of bro? David Icke? <laughs> he got it down. It's exactly what he said. Man. That is crazy. And then when happening. the girl came out, oh that's God. another story. Was she hot? Tell us. You guys want to hear it? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's yeah, it's I want to hear it's the rest of story. all of this, dude. It, that's not even the story. Why is it That's dark? just what? a little part that reminded me of the story because he said fastest pimp. Well, so so the girl comes out. She slipped on baby oil? The girl comes out. It's just the couch, empty living room. The house looks like a house that's worth like six hundred thousand. You know, yeah, I mean? it's, just like, it's in a bad neighborhood, <laughs> and Reseda, bro. The girl comes <laughs> out. The girl comes out, and the premise is the premise is there's no vaginal penetration at all in these in this series. Cause Cause not even a play. Hey, with, it's called she has a anal that's the cream premise. pies. But what's that's the, the story premise. start out? And not only that's is it the, the premise. premise. What's wrong, what's wrong with her vagina though? Why she could she's allowed to suck dick and only anal sex, but it can't go in her pussy. Because she's a Christian? That's and, for her boyfriend. No, because that's the series. Oh. Can I at least look series. at it for a little bit? That's the theme. The that's the genre. genre. Finger banger. <laughs> it's all anal. And, 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 and halfway through the movie, there's going to be a, 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 t a little part where she breaks the fourth wall, and she looks at the camera, and, and she goes, I know you want to fuck my pussy, but not today. Ass only. And then she gets back to fucking. They do. That's part of that hey, series. Can I like, eat her out and we cut it out of the scene? <laughs> that, I gotta have some hey, foreplay, homie. And, and she Seriously. fucked up that line ten yeah. times. <laughs> she did a. I, I go there Put a thinking passion in it. I, I go there <laughs> thinking it's gonna be like a Andrew Blake has orgy, and it. I'm gonna have sex with a hot ten. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm there going, and I swear to God, she comes out. She's getting, they're killing her ass. <laughs> at the same and time? Two at the same time. One in the mouth, one in the ass. Oh, they're, and I'm, ass. they're killing her ass. That's a, that's These guys had hogs. This live? I'm standing there going, how the fuck am I going to get out? I'm just, I want to do like that Homer Simpson on the, yeah, the, in the, in the bushes. You know what I mean? So she I, was, I, I oh, wanted I'm to like, do I'd be like, so we need popcorn now. It was uh, the, 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 the pork roast, right? The uh, pork roast. Uh, picture her. Uh, the one that she can't fuck up. The, and then, spit. and then, no, it's pork like, roast. Is you want to hear the whole story? Yeah, yeah. I haven't got to the good part. I'm standing there trying to figure out how the fuck I'm going to get out of seriously. I wanted to dip, but I didn't want to be a dick about it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, just I just disappeared. I'm like, smell. what am I going to no say? No pun intended. Dude, we're put mine. He, he, she's getting killed. And she, she's not even good looking. And I'm going, dude, I got to get the fuck out Is she out of here. loving it or just she's she getting, loving She's it? loving it. Oh, my God. Oh, when she man. looked in the camera and said, I, I knew they want to fuck it, this pussy. Hell yeah, dude. But not today. <laughs> Ass only. Damn. Dude. I'm like, damn. I just wanted to fucking dart out of that motherfucker. But then they pull, <sighs> he pulls out of her ass 
and all this brown water comes rushing out all over the carpet. Yeah, bro, it's truck oil. And we're like, <laughs> oh! She freaks out. She's like, it's just water. It's just water. And then she starts crying and runs to the bathroom, closes the door, and we're all in the living room dying. So this isn't normal. Then. We're laughing. We're, we're, it was hilarious. Oh she got God. all she got all upset over it, but to us it was funny. Right. And she was like, it's just water. I'm like... That's not I, that's not water. I'm not a br- marine biologist, but that <laughs> shit is not drink water, it, dog. You put in a cup, go drink <laughs> it then. Hey, so go they, ahead, it was water, just drink it. They fucked up the couch then. Though it was on the carpet. <laughs> oh, it was oh, okay. a big puddle on the carpet. Oh, yeah. And Martin's we're dying. We're the laughing. Coffee. She's Animals. crying. She's crying. Clean, bro. <laughs> She's you know how much crying. I paid for that couch? <laughs> <laughs> She's crying in the, in, pack them, man. In the bathroom. <laughs> we're dying laughing. But depressing. You know what I mean? And... uh it left a little wet spot. Are you quietly spot. laughing? Are you guys? We're, no, we're laughing. You're, and so she can, as she's crying in the bathroom, she can, we're probably trying to keep it down. <laughs> not, we're not in a movie. Yeah, and wow. then it, it she doesn't. She stays in the bathroom, and like after a while, the di- director, my student, is like, "Damn, we gotta fucking move. I gotta. There's a there's another cast of uh, workers upstairs warming up. They're gonna Whoa. take over. So we gotta get out. So now the director's like knocking on. Huh? The <laughs> they're knock, he's knocking on the bathroom door like yo 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 come on she goes no i'm so embarrassed she goes no no just come out it's fine i'm so embarrassed goes, no 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 come out it's fine she goes he, he's, then he starts saying it was just water <laughs> it was just water she goes oh, and then she comes juice. out la water she, baby she, he eventually drags her out because we got it we got you want to get paid we got to do this shit. we got to you want these 200 dollars or not so, <laughs> <laughs> she came back you want these drink tickets <laughs> <laughs> You want to get catering? <laughs> you want this two hundred dollars? I'll take it to jam in the van. Let me know. <laughs> Woo! It's, so like, they, hey, it's like comedy. They give her drink tickets. <laughs> she comes back out, and then they go back at it. And the dude, the dude that's like killing her in in her rectum, is like has his foot on the puddle. And right there, I took. He's off. the like soldier, I, man. I left, dude. I just snuck you didn't out. stay for catering. I snuck out, and uh-huh. dude, I'm halfway home. It was off the 118, and I, I'm on the 405. And he calls, and goes, "Yo, where'd you go?" I'm like, "Dude, I'm sorry, yeah, we're, we're, take off. Hey, we're short." I'm guy. like, "I think he goes, he goes, he goes, dude, I think she likes you." Uh, I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. <laughs> she has a crush on you. She has a crush like, on me. Hey, this is like chemistry. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm so gone. <laughs> no way, I'm coming gone. back to that shit. She could have made you happy, dog. What's yeah. up? Fool, everybody knows if you learn a new language, you should get Babbo. She did. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours apps on apps that don't really help you speak the language. With Babbo, you can learn everything you need to have a real-world conversation. From vocabulary words to culture, it always takes just 10 minutes a day because it's designed by real people for real conversations. Personal experience, of course, man. Right now, I'm learning how to speak Dutch. Because I'm going to move to Dutch, to um, actually to the Netherlands. Okay. <laughs> I'm learning Dutch. <laughs> ich leer Netherlands. Ich spreche nicht Deutsch. Nix so gut. Auf Wiedersehen bis morgen. Oh, du, bitte schon. I want to l- learn another language so I won't have to rely on the language apps while on vacation. It's easy to learn <laughs> how to order food, ask for direction, speak to sales clerks with without having to look for my translation app. I also really like Babbel's dialogue review feature where you can listen to native speakers have a conversation while you read along and fill in the blanks, man. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash Felipe. Get 55% off babbel.com slash Felipe. Spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Felipe. Rules and restrictions may apply. What's up, fool? What else happened at that porn site? That was it. Wow. That's the end of the story. Bro, that, bro, that's. One of the best. <laughs> I love it, dude. That that gave me PTSD for porn sets. After that, I'm like, no more porn sets for me. That was PTSD. Whoa. What? So, fool, you, you told me one time that you were at, uh, we were talking backstage at a, a at the Sram Tripoli show, the big show he puts up at the comedy store. Comedy chaos. Comedy chaos. Yes, man. So much fun. So a lot of big, oh big time motherfuckers show up to that yeah. show. Yeah. 
That's probably like the only time you're gonna get on comedy chaos with Sam Tripoli. The only time you're gonna get a show where with big motherfuckers like Eddie Bravo, right. um, Joe Diaz, me, and then like um, Jess O'Neck, people like that. Cause you know, if you were to Tony watch Rock, Tony Rock, if you were to watch this show somewhere else out of town, hundred dollars a ticket, straight up. Yeah, dude, the the, the heat, the, the heat. heat, and for me, free weed. I, I don't know if every any you know, most uh, comics are like this, but some you hear some comics that want like someone uh, weak in front of them so they look better. I don't. I'm not that guy. I want some. I want a beast before me to get everyone laughing. So when I come out, everyone's laughing and they're happy instead of coming out to pissed off motherfuckers like you brought me off to this shit. And then now you got to resurrect them. Ooh, hard to resurrect, right? How to that resurrect, easy. man? You said you were. You did a show with with um. You went to do a show with um, Joe Rogan in London, and he was making fun of soccer. Soccer. Yes. The oh, soccer yes. so big. Yes. Yes. So. And you got chased by hooligans. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we didn't get chased. What happened was, it's, it's just a little. No one really. Uh, it, Joe was doing comedy in England, and he start. He's got this bit about how. Uh, uh, you know, his, his bit is uh, soccer is so retarded. It's the only sport. Ba 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 ba. I don't know what the fuck the punchline is, but he he's got it's funny something. It's the only sport where da da da, and then you could only ba ba ba. And um and I'm sitting there next to Mark De La Grada, who's a famous Muay Thai coach. He's he's coached a lot of <laughs> UFC um, fighters, <clears throat> and we're sitting there and, in the front row, and he's going off, oh, dude. And people are starting to go, like you could hear the, the the rumbling. Oh shit! And I looked over at Mark De La Grada and I said, "Start the car." Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's why the story gets brought up because because I told Mark De La Grada, he'll never forget that. Every time I see him, it's like go start the car. <laughs> but no one actually came after us. But the the, the crowd got yeah. It was yeah. like you're kind of bombing. It's not working here, dog. It's, it's sensitive, yeah, it's for them, yeah, yeah. It's like they oh, love, they love. Uh, football. Soccer out there, football. Yeah, yeah. Out there that much, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to fuck with soccer in England, dog. You, you better shut the fuck up about soccer. When you guys do the the the, the show with um, with Joe and Brendan Shaw, uh, the you fight companion, fight companion during the fight, those are all, those are live, right? Those are live. Those yeah. are live while you guys are watching the fight and people are, are chatting on YouTube. So they're watching the fight with the on mute. Yes. And then they're listening to the podcast. So like the commentary is from Joe Rogan's podcast instead of their the crew. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty dope. Dude. That's pretty they dope. do that for that. Monday Night Football too. Like you go watch Monday Night Football with the regular commentators, or you go watch it with Peyton Manning and Eli Manning, the brothers. They do like a like a like a fight companion too. That's pretty dope. But you, you, but you guys do the choice. So how how does that work? Um, are you guys watching the fight also live yes. at we're, the at the fight or at on video or where? No, at the podcast where Joe does his podcast. Oh, so you guys cool, are watching dude. the fight on the screen and it's on mute, but you guys are commentating. Yes, oh, that's, that's cool. Even, that's dude. We can hear we can yeah. hear it on our headphones, but we can't show it or or do anything like through the podcast. All the podcast is us watching it. Yeah, and, and talking. they're watching it at home. Yeah, but you're not showing the fight. Have it on uh, and to it. That's at the same time, there. So you could like, do that for uh, if you watch a concert. That's smart. Yeah. If it's live. Yeah, it's, it's live. live. Yeah. Oh, and people sure. chat yeah. in. Huh? They're, it's got to be something that. The, it's well, got to yeah, be something yeah, that only fans. The, the audience can watch live. They got to be able to see it. If it's and they just, pay to watch on Patreon or how they do that no, or live free. It's just whatever. You know, Joe's on Spotify, but now it, it, he's on everything now. Yes. His new deal is is like YouTube and everything. So The Fight Companion, what's the next one? Probably Mar uh, May 4th. That's going to be in Brazil. It's usually when Joe, because Joe doesn't like traveling internationally anymore for the UFC. It's just too much. It's just too much traveling. He's got families. His daughters are getting older. He's got a, he doesn't want to travel in our, internationally unless it's for vacation. Um and when there's an international show, that's when we'll, he stays in. They got their international guy they send out. You know, Joe doesn't do all the UFCs anymore like he did before. He only does the the big pay-per-views that are in the United States. Ah, uh, okay. Because before, it's like, well, like every week? He did every fucking every show. Every week. Uh, but he did every show, but there weren't as many shows. Now there's a show every weekend. 
Yeah. So back then it was like one show a month, and he was I could do one a month, fucking one once a month. I could, and that was no problem. But then when they once they started adding shows during the week, there's Wednesday shows every now and then, uh, a Friday show every now and then. They mix it up. I remember like man, like when I was a kid, I remember like the late '90s watching like the Spanish Channel, Channel 22. Like it was. It was UFC, but it was like before it was like what it is now. And I remember just like. It looked good. It was called Combate Mortal. I'm like, what? what? Combate Mortal. Yeah, like Mortal Kombat. I was like, what the fuck is No this? way, yeah, really? It was crazy. It wasn't, it wasn't UFC, though, right? It was, it it was, was like, like another. It was, it was, it was like, like UFC before UFC. Yeah. Or maybe. No, I, I think UFC no, was already around, but no, it was just still kind of underground. There's right? a bunch of different uh, companies like the UFC. Yeah. UFC. Because I remember it came UFC's being the kid, biggest, but there's the, a bunch of. I remember being a kid and the homie brought over at UFC 1. UFC 1 was 93. Yeah, okay, I remember yeah. watching Yeah, that. that was and, a long time ago. Yeah, and I remember, like, it was like, I just remember the heavyweights, bro, because I was like, these are fucking huge dudes. But where were you watching? I, was, I had to get in a fight the next day when they brought that video over, and I was like, dang, bro. I don't Bump fights? A, I don't want to fight. <laughs> That's the original UFC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> freaked me out, bro. Bump oh fights? God. That's, That's when we filmed that the next day. <laughs> hey. Do you remember felony fights? Yeah. Fuck yeah. 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 Like, hey, they, hey, my name is my name is Casper. Eh? I'm gonna leave yeah. this fool out. Eh? My name is Dropper. I don't give a fuck. Eh? Like, yeah, I love that shit, dude. They shot that in fucking I think Tijuana, bro. No, I, like, I thought it was shot by Santa. I was like, never because sometimes it's like at storage facilities and they would like slam each other to the doors. <laughs> it was during, it was during dead. work hours, bro. <laughs> yeah, well, they fucked up someone's property. Dude. I saw this one cholo fight. Two lesbian cholas, and he I saw them. that one, bro. He grabbed I the chola and threw it at the girl. Bro, dude. Put a, <laughs> look at the video: cholo fights two cholas. Bro, <laughs> they don't even they have, fight in a basketball. They don't gym. even have felony fights on YouTube anymore. YouTube used to be rough, bro. You can watch whatever you we want. We had a box. Uh, we had a UFC fighter here. His name was um, Big Dog. Big Dog, huh? Mariano. Mariano Big Dog, and he fought heavyweight. And uh, he fought before when it was like any anybody it was all fucking anybody, and that fool said that um, he was hired to fight in Saudi Arabia, bro. Wow. And one of those fights where fuck if you you could you could die like a kumite while, er, while everybody's eating dinner. No way! <laughs> what the fuck? Do they really have those, dude? Bro, like have like the, like, like, the, like the one the Mandingo fight in um in that movie um, Django. Exactly like that, bro. He said it was like they were, saw, they were like in the Middle East somewhere. Have you ever heard of anything like that? Uh, that kind of shit would be you got highly that? secretive. Yeah, right. you got offered that. Fighting to the death? You talking about? That yeah, kind of shit? that's like high society shit right there. Right? Well, he lived. But bro. I mean, as a pro they fighter, a, you never had nobody. Show up, my little crazy dog, shit bro. In private. Maybe in Bohemian Grove they do that shit. That sounds like something they do at Bohemian Mariano Grove. Mariano Big Dog, Mendoza. That's like some. That's Mariano like some Big Dog, dog Mendoza, right there, dude. dude. Kumatai or Kubate, remember that? Yeah. You never been offered that at go wrestle somebody's yard for it, that That's like a house party, like to a comedian, right? Like, you know, I got it. It's a gig. corporate gig, I got bro. A corporate gig. <laughs> we you, die you like every corporate night. Gigs? Fuck no, they, they pay well, but they suck. At the end, you feel bad about it. <laughs> Watch this guy die. Yeah, in I always our backyard. hear, I hear <laughs> bad things about corporate gigs. Yeah. Like, cause they're not like your fans. They're, they're worth like, the nah, money, they're right? Not. They're worth they the don't money. understand yeah. you. They don't know it's what. Different, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. way easier when it people know who you are. Not everybody's yeah. Dan Ninen, yeah. bro. Backyard gigs. <laughs> my, my friend's having a birthday party. He wants to fight in the backyard instead of a comedy show. Fight. Dirty mattress, bro. <laughs> <and a jake. laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. That's so funny. Dude. I went to one we where food after. <laughs> I, went, I went. I did a comedy show at somebody's house where the stage was that part of the room that had a step. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Yeah. You know the step up living rooms? At least to the den. Huh? Oh. Like a sunken living yeah. room and I was on top, bro. <laughs> Homie used to have the 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 shows in his house back in the day, bro. I still do shows at houses. Yeah, dude. Sometimes. I did, <laughs> dude, I that's right. During <laughs> the pandemic, I did You did a house up one of the last things did somebody's living room like uh. stand up and it Dude, I'm trying to think. I think it was for New Year's. I think like 2014. I remember it was like somebody's like New Year's and like I, I the last one I did was in Santa Ana. I think, yeah, it was like... I think I did one like a month ago or two months ago because yeah. Don't Tells have those. Yeah. Don't Tells have them in, like, in the Bay. They have... We did one in someone's backyard. It was a dope show, oh, though. These are house parties. Like, yeah, it was like a dope backyard show, bro, but Don't Tell set yeah. it up. And then they I did, did one, one, bro, that, man, 
Somebody was taking a shave, bro. <laughs> they went to go take a shave. You could tell they went to go take a shave. <laughs> oh, bro. That's the all o- bad. The take only a shit back I- at your house, dude. <laughs> the only gig I did like that, I did um, <laughs> some festival in the middle of Texas. It was some kind of like a hippie festival. I forget. Everybody was nice, and it was in the middle of nowhere, and there wasn't that many people. But it was some, but it, all the people that had money was like on a ranch. And they wanted to have comedians out there. And they brought me, Sam. I, 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 Sam hooked it up. They go, dude, they paid good. So they paid good. You know what I mean? They paid good. And I showed up. You show up. There's no lighting on the stage. <laughs> no. you're, you're doing stand-up yeah. in the dark. Because wow. they had one light. They thought it was good. But the one light they, they got had. got that remote mic like, that echoes. It was like <laughs> it wasn't set up right. So you're just basically in the dark. You're doing. It's like audio stand-up. Is this a military and there's like, gig? There's like, no, it was like a hippie gig. Uh, and there's. there's Probably about fifty people watching at most. That's still good. And man, I was a show. When I was like, (laughs) "Show, dog." I I I don't enjoy shows like that. I like uh, I like I like it when you you know me and Sam do Ten Four Hat Comedy, and everyone there is a fan of his podcast. I like it's so much easier when they when the people there are there to see you and it's like some not like, like some random crowd from some corporate gig. Yeah, uh, it's tough. You know, you got to be a bad motherfucker to uh, enjoy that shit. You know Man. what I mean? Like Sam loves it. Sam loves going in, into alleys and shit and doing stand up. That's the because he'll go. That's, that's like a, <laughs> those are people, bro. Because he probably did a lot of because I, I I still love that shit too, man. It's like oh, I loved open mic when everybody was complaining about open mics. I was like. I love how shitty these things are, dude. It's fucking fun. Open mics, they give you, uh, uh, watching an open mic gives you confidence, right? You're like, oh my God, I could yeah. I, I, I could do better than this. <laughs> That's why I love you them. know what I mean? They, they give you a lot of confidence. When you're feeling down on yourself, yeah, go yeah. to an open mic. Dude, I went to- But don't get up. Dude, I went to- Don't get, I, don't get up. I went to- um, The ding dong A friend of mine, a friend of mine went to a comedy <laughs> class. <laughs> Oh, he got uh, he got hooked into a comedy class, and at the end of the, the comedy class, like the three month program, you get the, the final exam is you're gonna get to do five minutes you at, graduate, at, yeah. at a club in L A. Yeah, they they reserve like like Sunday at five p.m. If yeah, they're already closed, that they go you could use that shit for two hours and yes. like a deal. They give them a couple hundred rob, bucks. Bro. So I I went to one of those, dude. Whoa, one it was so bad. It was so bad. One guy, he was bombing so hard that he fucking snapped. He was he sweating. Felt his class, he bro. bombed so hard. He went, I fucking suck. <laughs> and then the whole crowd fucking erupted. He just dude, murdered. Dude. Dude. <laughs> Everybody was on the floor. That's dying. hilarious, bro. <laughs> it was that bad. It was below open mic. It was crazy. <laughs> so let's get killed. I said, he fucking sucked. <laughs> I fucking suck. Man, suck. You been to a, a, a graduation show? No, but I know uh, I have friends that took uh, classes at Pasadena City College. They teach stand up there, and then you graduate, uh, you perform at the Ice House, just like down the street. But never. You never been to the graduation show? Oh shit, dude! What happened? That thing just fell. All right. No, so. I, I never been to a graduation show. You? I went to a graduation show for the comedy camp. The, the kids. <laughs> Oh, for the kids' comedy camp. Camp Snoopy, bro. That's nice. That's cool, bro. It was like, man, watching kids bomb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> really? Yeah, they suck that, that bad? We, have an, we had an adult comedy camp. There was at- one cocky kid, bro, that went over his time, bro. <laughs> like, he could tell his mom was pushing him to be a star. Oh, man. He came, he came in with a suit, bro. He sucked. He sucked, too, bro. <laughs> and, and then even the host said, give it up for the first comedy camp comedian to do, go over his set. Supposed to do five, did fifteen, bro. Nice, good for him, dude. Yeah, he was horrible. What, what's shit, your dude? process when you're coming up with new bits? Do you do they, do they just come up randomly throughout the day and you write them on your phone real quick, the basic idea, and then you work on it later? Or oh do you, man, do you I write know, anything at all. I go into the, in the woods, bro. I go in the woods, and, like, and I like it was a full moon. I turn to a werewolf, and the old lady comes up to me, and goes. Wolf man, nah. nah. <laughs> I, I listen to, I do my, I record my whole set. Okay. And then I listen to it like two times. Right after or I, later? Later the next day, like I'm on a treadmill okay. or I'm walking around the city and I listen to it and I come up with tags. tags. Okay. Things you should have said. 
things that should have said. And then nice. you, you, you punch them on your phone? Yeah. So you have like notes on your phone, all your shit. I record it on my phone. First I, mean, first I record it on my phone, and then I listen to it, and then I take notes on my paper. You write it down on paper. You write it down, down on paper. Yeah. Why yeah, not, because why shit not gets, in your phone? Because shit gets lost in your phone. Because my phone, I, I will, I'll never look at it again. Yeah, same. Something about something having something physical is just I write more... all my notes. I, I translate. I Because like sometimes I'll just be on my phone at a show, and I'll think of something, and I'll go, oh, blah, 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 <laughs> blah and I'll go home. Yeah. I have a master notebook at home that I write everything in. Because yeah. if I lose this, I don't, I'll don't. i not get those. What I do is I, I write it all on my phone, and periodically I email the whole thing to me. That's so in too. case I lost my phone, I have it in my email. I have them stored. Like all That's the important smart. notes. I have I a Dragon Voice transcriber, so I'm just like blah, 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 blah. Types it out, and then when I get home, yeah. I should, Dude, that's actually smart. What about new bits? Like you have, you're in a conversation with your buddies and oh, something comes up? Oh, if I to, before I will say, I will tell the joke in front of everybody, but now I don't say nothing and just keep it to myself. And I'll say it later. <laughs> Before I used to or try stuff on Twitter, but now I'm like I don't put I don't do it anymore because people. Me take too. It. I, I put something on Twitter the other day as a new joke, and um, I, I'm not even a joke. I said, man, <clears throat> I said I'm a straight up big fat marrano. I'm just go past and go to jam. I'm just a fat piggy. <laughs> I like mud, but I have no punchline. But if I write a joke, they say like I want to write a joke about being a pig. I will write down because this this is like the old way to do it. I will write pig right on top. And then on the bottom, I'll write other pig names I can think of, but like Wilbur, <laughs> Porky Pig, um, whatever, whatever. And then stuff that I've heard p- pigs say, oink, oink, or eh, or whatever. Nice, yeah. Wee, wee. Right. Then I think about a movie, something where, where something nasty. Then by that time, bro, I remember in my, my, my mind, I'm remembering shit where something, there was a pig involved, like, that movie where that guy getting raped and he's like guy, deliverance oh, and that oh, guy yeah. saying squeal, like squeal, squeal. Yeah. squeal. And he's squeal behind like him. Pig, he's going wee wee. Yeah. 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 So then, bro, by that time, bro, I'm, I'm coming up with nasty shit, bro. Nice. Oh, dale, nice. homie. And then about Sam, um, Jules, Samuel Jackson, when he's talking about a pig. A pig is a filthy animal. Right, right. So right. then, by that time, I'm, I'm, by that time, I'm, I'm pretty like I have pig in my head, so I'm. I'm it comes easy to write a joke. That's fucking yeah. really interesting. Nice. You really That's are, what you really process. are, but you can write it on a paper. Like di- like but you can write pig universe. on a paper, pig with a bunch of in the cloud, and then arrows coming out of it, like like, like ra- uh, the rainstorm. Rainstorm, yeah. Yeah. Brainstorm, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's actually really interesting. so you immerse yourself in the yeah. joke and then you think of the joke. That's really, really. really like when cool. I was writing a, a joke about sex, I was writing, I wrote like because I've never been in a relationship where like I was watching this movie. And they, and they had a safe word every time like it got the sex got too rough, <laughs> she would say cacao. Oh yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> so cacao. So then I th- then I wrote about okay, I, I wrote a bunch about I wrote okay so that's a, that's a safe word cacao, or blah about different safe words. So then I wrote like I never been in a relationship sexual relationship where a safe word was needed, money was needed, an ATM needed to be around, <laughs> but uh, no no safe word. But if you're gonna come up with a safe word, it has to be something fast, like you know, like milk or cheese. Right. It can't be a long ass word. Yes. You'll, you'll, you'll choke to death. It'll be like tapping out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you can't say horchata. Yeah. Horchata is two taps. <laughs> horchata. It'll be, like, it'll be milk. You know, one. It's gotta tap. be one continent. <laughs> yeah. Horchata. <laughs> That's funny, dude. What's up, Rizzo? Where are you going to be at next? Uh, tomorrow we're going to Albany. Albany. You been to Albany? I don't think so. Maybe once for a seminar, a jiu-jitsu seminar, maybe. You, re- re- I'm excited for that. I'm going to be in um, uh, Albany next. Okay, I'm going to be in Albany next week. This week. Next week, Richmond Heights. That's St. Louis. March 29th, San Luis Obispo. March 30th, Santa Barbara. Mar- April 6th, Monterey. April 12th, Seattle Neptune Theater. April 13th, Salem. Tickets at FelipeWorld.com, baby. Yeah. And I'll also, also oh, yeah, I'm on a, I'm on Eddie Brower's podcast too. Oh, shit. I don't know when that comes out in two weeks, probably. No, it's 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 uh, already out on Rockfin, and then Rockfin. And then it becomes free in like a month and a half. So okay. it's we're like, that's that's how it works. I gotta. Also, we have a History for Fools podcast wrap up. We have a History for Fools podcast. We just talk about history of whatever. 
We did one on the American Revolution. Yeah, we did guns, Napoleon, uh, Chinese food, which was actually really interesting. Um, what else did we do? A uh, circus. We Stand did up a comedy. On circus. Back in the day, we did like long ones on like podcasts. I mean, like on. Um, we did one on stand up comedy. Stand up comedy, bro. Like fuck, bro. Gangs. Like we did native comedians, that black comedians. Yeah. We did a little bit on Latino comedian, but not too much. And bro, you know that like, the first marquee, the first like now appearing Eddie Bravo tonight, two shows, eight o'clock. That it's, sign, it's, uh, yeah. the first sign, the first sign they ever made fell on top of the comic that was supposed Whoa. to perform that week. Oh, my God. So he's taking a photo like this, now appearing, Eddie Cantor. But the sign ripped and killed him, bro. Instantly. Yeah, the, wow. the guy, the first guy to have his name on a marquee got killed by his name on a marquee. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we learned about the, the first MC before there was no host. Just a girl would come out with a little card and say, now... Performing Martin Rizzo, right? What? Pe- yeah. Petrix. Yeah, MC was the MCing was the really first. Um, like the they would the guy would be like, "What's his name? Frank something," and he was like, "Fuck this, dude! I'm just gonna go out and bring up acts in the middle." And that's when he really that's when stand up that's one of the places that they think stand up was invented because he would just do a little time in between each act, make everybody laugh. And um, yeah. you know, you you said that you had to um. Go up after somebody that was horrible. It was boring. Yeah. Back then, they they actually had a big ass hook. Right. Yeah. Like a big hook, yeah. and they just put it. They'll, they'll take the they drag the performer the out. Yeah. Yeah. They had but a hoop. A hoop, and also a hoop. hoop. Was, but 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 then those shows were really slow shows. They they not they were not like the big shows you can watch. They those shows sucked. Right. But, but the main attraction was the hoop. Or throwing, uh, fruit. or they'll give you fruit on the way in to throw it. Down. That's where so it's almost you, you, like a talent show that you wanted to see people fail. We should bring that yes. back. You yes. think oh, pies? Yeah. You think, uh, you think free, uh, bro. two, three hundred, five hundred years ago, the stand-up comedians were legit? Like, if you went back in we a time machine, we didn't go that machine, far back. We didn't go that far back. We, we went to, like, we went back to jesters though. Stand-up only goes back about, would you say, hundred and fifty years, maybe? Like, like 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 Shakespeare times, you mean like like like? But any, I mean, overall, like, you, think, you think you <clears> think <throat> stand up comedy is new? It, you would think that like cavemen were doing stand up comedy. Oh, they're probably yeah. But they were called not stand up. They were called monologists. Of, of, of like like story like natives. True stayers. That's one of the things we did when we did uh, the history of stand up was that this the stand up comedy for natives comes mm. back. They would have a guy that would entertain and brighten everybody's night up. At the powwow. The powwow. What if that was some badass comedians? We think they, there's no way they could be good. But, but what good. if they were amazing What if they just wrote shit down? Like, like Indians or like fucking yeah. ancient right. Egyptians. What if they were killing it? Yeah. What if what what if those things are actually punchlines? Yeah, dude. The pyramids. Uh, oh, you mean <laughs> yeah, the, 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 like, the, the, the like caves? a series of higher standards. Like everybody, like everybody always expects to be some secret code, some secret spiritual. Maybe <laughs> these guys were actually oh, funny. That was like a funny code. Like I remember she that. went hey, this bro. way, <laughs> and then she went. Yeah. Writing jokes on writing I jokes. thought she was this But she was yeah. this, this. <laughs> <laughs> Writing jokes on cheap Bro skin. I remember like, I thought the, There was a comedian I was working with And she, she had She had a joke about um, She did an Arab guy And it was hard to spell his name Because one of the letters Was a cup <laughs> That's funny dude <laughs> Was a cup was A chalice like, the, Yeah dude So your podcast every week uh, on Rockfin, you go to rockfin.com slash Eddie Bravo. It's called Look Into It. Uh, we got 100 episodes. Um, uh, our episode just came out uh, last week. And um, did Ooh, Alex Jones it. today. Not Alex that. Jones coming out Friday. Uh, oh, yeah. Let me tell you something. Uh, when, when, where is your um, school? People want to join your school. You have a bunch of them? Or just TenthPlanetJJ.com. TenthPlanetJJ.com. And you have to you you actually have a team right that goes up um to compete with jujitsu people. Yep, yep. Ten Planet Jujitsu. That's that's what pays the rent. Me teaching jujitsu pays the rent. Hell but yeah. I do comedy for fun. Like I don't. I make a couple. That's cool. That how how you um jumped into um being a because you, man you're, you're a renaissance man. I did comedy before jujitsu. Yeah. But most people don't know that. I, I used to work for Comedy Central. I wrote on The Man Show when Joe Rogan was on The Man Show. Yeah, with Shit. Doug Stanhope. Yes, when he was with Doug Stanhope. Yeah. I was, I was, you know, one of Joe's writers. 
and um, JoeRogan.net. <laughs> and I did I did some open mics at the comedy store, and I realized I realized that um, I, I already knew that comedy, uh, a lot, m- most of comedy is public speaking skills. And then you gotta be funny too, but you gotta be smooth on stage. And I DJed at strip clubs for 10 years. Let me tell you, bro. So I thought that was gonna translate. You, you know, did? I thought it was gonna oh, translate. Shit. I go, I Give got a lot of voice. public speaking. So I could, I, you know, I make, you know, I make guys laugh in the locker room. And like Joe, you know, and Joey D is like, you're, you know, you're going up tonight. You're gonna, you're gonna do it. You better have material ready. So they, <laughs> they threw me up. Better have material ready. Because I would, talk, I would, I would talk, I would, I would talk shit like I, you know, I would write and stuff. But they go, dude, we're enough. We were at the coffee bean on Sunset and Joey Diaz and Fuck Joe yeah, good, there and they go copy. dude if you don't go up tonight it was on a Sunday we don't ever want to hear this shit again please, <laughs> please shut the fuck up about it. so then I went up and I realized I went up about like nine times and when I realized like oh shit all that strip club DJ experience is not translating you know what I mean so I realized like damn for me to be a, a legit comedian I'm gonna have to go out like all comedians five yeah. days a week six days a week trying to get set after set and I'm like I, I'm gonna have to do that that I was I was thinking I didn't have to do that because because of my strip club DJ experience but how wrong was I? I was like, oh my God, that shit didn't do anything. Like, put those hands together for candy. That doesn't do nothing for comedy. <laughs> that doesn't do nothing for comedy, Good you know talk. what I mean? So I said, <coughs> I, can't, I, gotta, I gotta let this stand-up comedy shit go and just focus on jujitsu and music. Mm-hmm. So I was just focusing on jujitsu and music. And I was writing with Joe. We wrote a lot of sketches for um, uh, The Man Show, you know, and all that. But I go, I, I don't have time to be a professional public speaker right now. I just don't, I don't have the chops. I can't go out five nights a week. I can't do it. I could write though and keep doing jujitsu and music. <coughs> and then after 15 years of teaching jujitsu, now I have 15 years of public speaking experience. Yeah. Teaching seminars all over the world. Sam Tripoli goes. So you go to town and speak up on, on jujitsu. Yeah, so I've That's been doing. Badass. I did that for fifteen years. Right. Like I teach jujitsu all over the world. Worldwide, I got like two hundred schools all over the world. And congratulations, man. dude! It, it, Hell yeah! Thank you. I didn't mean for that to happen. It happened on its own. I did not not try it. But my point is, for fifteen years, I'm going around the world teaching seminars and getting my. And then I throw I throw jokes in. So I'm like in the jujitsu world. This guy, he, every now and then, he says some crazy shit while he's teaching. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, I get that reputation, but it was only because I was, you know, I. Dabbled in comedy before, so it was still coming out, and I, it's kind of like when I do seminars, I will do like five minutes of stand up. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's cool. And yeah, then dude. people want to hear, and they go, "That's oh. dope, though, because like humor really, like if you're listening to a person speaking humorously, it's a lot easier yeah. than if they're just dry." Yeah, but humor but, is like a conveyor of information. Really but well. see, this is this is the, this is the trip though. Is when I was teach when I'm teaching at my home school here in downtown LA. Nobody wants to hear the jokes. These guys are here. <laughs> they worked all day. Yeah. They want to do jujitsu, and I, I get into a story. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like this, like like the the the, the porn set story. Oh, I, would, I, I, would, I would say I, shit like yeah, that. I was rad I would, though. I would bring that story, up. Dude. But then like like my guys go, Coach, we gotta fucking start, dog. So I, I'd be I'd be bombing all the time. These people didn't want to laugh. They wanted to do jujitsu. A couple guys would chuckle, but I was bombing every night. In jiu-jitsu for 15 years but i kept doing it you know because it was like i didn't take it personally i'm like right. i'm not being paid to be funny yeah. so i'm not taking it personally but it does kind of hurt when i'm halfway through a story and my students go dude you're Whoa. talking too long <laughs> <laughs> so anyway so sam 2017 15 years later sam was sam i knew sam from when i tried to do comedy originally and he goes dude if you ever want to come up dude you can come up and do it try it again because sam's always trying to encourage people to do yeah. comedy he always brings in new guys and trying to, to hook them up i think he hooked uh, tom segura up i think he was the guy who got him into it oh, right. so yeah. so he said if you and i go ah, i don't know if I, I could it's been so long i don't know and he goes dude just you could do it come on i'm like fuck i never stopped writing I always thought maybe one day I'll, I'll try yeah. to do a set. So I never stopped writing. I never stopped. I, always, I got a full notes up my ass Damn, for years. Dude. So I go, and I wanted to, to give to other comedians, like, here's some ideas. I can't go on stage. Because I, I didn't have the public speaking skills. Yeah. But now it's 2017. And I, I finally took Sam up as, on his offer on a comedy chaos. He goes, I'll give you fucking like seven minutes or something. And I go, oh, shit. I, fuck, it's been so long. Oh, my God. I, oh, my God. I'm on the main, main stage going, fuck, Richard Pryor's on this motherfucker. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, fuck. And then I went out there. And the difference between me trying to tell a joke at my school and trying to tell a joke at the comedy store is a couple, a few things, important things. They want to laugh. Yeah, they're, yeah they're, they want to laugh. They're fucking yeah. drunk. 
My students aren't drunk. And I got a mic. Yeah. And everyone's silent. Like within like, I swear, man, within 15 seconds, I'm like, oh shit, I got a mic, dog. I got a <laughs> mic and they want to laugh and they're drunk. This, so it's like me bombing at my school is like strength and condition. That's an open mic. You know right what I mean? Dude, yeah. The mic, I realized, oh my God, I'm so not used to speaking into, I'll do seminars in front of a hundred people, no mic. I'm like yelling and shit like that. But now the mic is fucking oh. like, it's like a fucking lifesaver. You can yeah. like a sword, dog. Game you know changer, what I mean? Yeah. So then at that point I thought, I got a lot of work to do cause I didn't have no material. I went up there just with some bullshit. Uh. And, and then the first night was good. It was good. I was like, damn, I could do this. Fuck. All that teaching got my public speaking skills down. Shit. It's like a seminar, but it's I got a mic and they're <laughs> drunk and they want to laugh. You know what I mean? So the next, I remember the second show, I was too confident. Bomb second show. Third show is okay. And then I'm just like, damn, this is going to take a while to get my fucking set together. So I, I didn't. And I, and I would do what you did. Like, like Joe always told me, record all your sets and listen back to them. And for like the first fucking four years, it was very painful listening back to my shit. Very painful. Me knowing, what, me trying to figure shit out yeah, on stage. Man, painful. And, yeah, man, painful. Oh, man. Is it you know, still painful, painful for you? It's painful. But like the last year, about the last year, and it's been like six years, seven years, now I can listen to my set and not cringe. That's cool. Now That's I'm like, awesome. Okay, I'm getting it together. I'm getting it, and it's it's smooth now. I got my shit together. I could, I got my shit mapped out. I know how I'm gonna start. I'm gonna boom. I could do this. So now, just over the last year, I'm feeling comfortable. You know what I mean? I feel like a, a blue belt. What do you next? Awesome, what do you your next show with, with Comedy Chaos or Jamming Event? Um, my band is playing now. I do because I want to be a rock star growing yeah. up. Right. The only reason, uh, but. Uh, nobody likes my music, you know what I mean. So, <laughs> I, but I never stopped making it, and now I do comedy music. That's oh, badass! So, That's yeah, really so cool. now, yeah. yeah so, um, I, I just released an album. It's called the band's called Hook Thieves. The album's called Jar of Hook Lies. Thieves. Hook Thieves Jar of Lies. You could you could find it on uh, all music platforms. We it dropped in October, and every song is a joke parody song. But I'm trying to make it as um, uh good as possible musically yeah you know so, there it is yeah that's the album right there oh, it's shit. a it's a parody yes. of alice in chains jar of flies this one's called <laughs> this one's called jar of lies and the kid if you look at both those album covers that the, the the that's the alice in chains with no mask mine has a mask and instead of flies in the jar they're little covid balls <laughs> oh, that's so alice in chains you is like, a video shot a video it's called um uh el coyote and it's um and before, if, if you're gonna play a little bit of that, let me explain. No, no, bad, no, 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 um, I don't think we can play because yeah. we won't get we won't get demonetized. Okay, okay. Can okay, you play it if you want? Yeah. But the song, this is like I said, I, most of the music I written my whole life was super serious. There were joke songs, but I always wrote joke songs on the side, and uh -huh. I record them and play them for three people. And that's it. I would never, I would have a good, I would always make joke songs my whole life. Even when I was 15, I rewrote Angel of Death by Slayer. It was called Angel of AIDS. I changed Whoa. all the lyrics and it was, it was about, oh, it, it was about a, a hooker that was killing everybody with their pussy. That's I, so oh, I, I've always dude, wrote dude. joke songs, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> but, but um, during the scandemic, I was writing a lot of joke songs. <laughs> and, Hell yeah. And there was nothing to do, so me and my students would just hang out, and one of my students played piano, and he's really good, his name is Armand. So now I would be doing these jokes. I'd, be, I'd make songs about my students and just bag on them, and then I'm gonna make a song yeah. about you, Hell and yeah. then I'm gonna make a song about you, and I just bag on all my friends, and just make songs about the scandemic, and COVID, and <laughs> Joe Biden, and Joe Biden. Yeah. I got a Joe Biden song and everything. But now, now with the piano, now that my, my my student Armand is such a great piano and he's so good at just jumping on whatever I play, he could just jump on and play on top of it. So oh, now shit. I'm playing these joke songs and now there's all this piano behind it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make a fucking album of these songs because we would just jam them all through the scandemic. Nothing to do. <laughs> We'd watch UFC fights and we would just piano. Oh, yeah. So the whole album is piano, acoustic guitar, and cajon. Like the, the little box drum, the whole album. So the reason I, I, I used that album cover as a tribute to Alice in Chains was that was their acoustic album too. So this is like, 
I did an acoustic album too. I love Alice in Chains so much. It's just parody, mocking oh. society. So El Coyote is about, um, uh, it's about, it's a song sung through the eyes of a human trafficker through the border. And that's what a coyote is. Yeah. So it's a joke, you know, cause um, uh, I believe in bringing in good, honest people to the country, good workers, good, honest people, but you can't let like rapists in, you know what I mean? So you gotta vet. I believe in a vetting system. Yeah. You know what I mean? We can't just let, there's like, you know, the, the border crisis going on, that's out of control. Let's vet these people. Let's let the good people in. You wanna work and you and you wanna be honest and work, come in, all, all you. But Everybody but your, um, your family. Over yeah, but we, <laughs> I, know, right? I mean, it's just common sense. You yeah. can't just let. Hey, it's the government, the, the announcer guy. Yeah, the, uh, and Mike Beltran is in there. He plays MS-13. I play the Coyote. And uh, the, the way the song started, I'm hanging out with my liberal friends who are musicians. You guys musicians. use authentic Mexicans in this? Oh, yeah, mad okay. Me Mexicans. At the end, it's a John Wick shootout. The, the message is super confusing. I wanted no message. Yeah, so I go, there's going to be a shootout and everyone's going to die. The border patrol's gonna die. Everybody's gonna die. I just want it to be confusing. There is no message. The message is, it's a joke song. And I'm hanging out with my liberal friends and I have a guitar and I go, what's the most liberal thing I could say right now? And I said, fuck the wall. Let those Mexicans in. And, and they were laughing. My liberal friends were laughing. I go, you know what, I think I, think I got a song. <laughs> fuck the wall, let those Mexicans in. They loved it. My white friends. <laughs> like we are the people. Is it is the uh, on yeah. on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yo soy el coyote. Here comes the shootout. Watch. Here comes the shootout. That's Mike Beltran. I don't want no more trouble. Here we gonna fuck the wall, dog. Okay, <laughs> little Michael Beltran. Oh, I got it, bro. <laughs> oh no, like I shoot out, dog. Shoot out. All those border patrol agents are my students. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> dies, dog. I die. Boom. A, a, a bulletproof vest with a coke. Eh? Fuck, yeah. <laughs> Let those Mexicans in. Singing, got those Let Mexicans those Mexicans in. Oh. And then look, look how we ended. We, uh, not everybody died. I, look at the girls didn't die. We didn't kill them. No, innocent women were harmed. See, everyone's dead in the back. It's like a, like, like a, uh, Walking Dead. Everyone's just dead like zombies. <laughs> What's up, Food Podcast? Whoa. Eddie Bravo, man. Woo! Thank you. Man. Hey, I don't know when this is coming out, but we're oh, playing Friday. It. It's coming out Friday. Oh, this Sunday. This song, yeah, what up? St. Patty's Day. I have um, the band that you just heard yeah. is going to be at the end in Torrance. It's a comedy club and it's a, a rock club, so there, it's right? perfect. The end in Torrance. Go Sunday, check out Eddie Bravo. St. Patty's Day. It's a Saint free Patrick show, Day. 5 p.m. It's a free show, 5 p.m. Oh, my Woo! God, man. Hell yeah. Let's do this. What's up, what's up, what's up?